Hey guys, it's Mike McKinstry, host of the Bass Watch Hunter. And today I'm doing a versus slash comparison video. I'm doing the Z Man Jackhammer uh, by Evergreen versus the new Berkeley Slobber Knocker. I'm gonna go over the differences, the pros, the cons, advantages, disadvantages, and hopefully we're gonna get some fish on both of these. So let's go. All right, so first thing with uh, the slobber knocker, we're gonna throw this first. Uh, the major difference you're gonna notice is on the head right here, how the blade's attached directly to the jig head. Uh, there's no clips or anything to connect it, so it's got a direct connection right to the top of the head, which means it's gonna transfer that vibration from the blade right down to that trailer and the skirt, and it's gonna be a lot tighter vibration than the jackhammer. Um, also, something I didn't notice about this is the head shape. If you look at it sideways, you can see the shape of the head. It's got a nice little smooth slope on the bottom right there. Um, so when it does hit the bottom, it'll still vibrate while it's hitting the bottom and while it's skipping across hard surfaces. So I like that too. Uh, so some lots of differences in this one. And I, this hook right here, that Berkeley Fusion hook is pretty cool. So we're gonna throw the uh, slobber knocker first. Uh, we'll do a fun little review on that. Also make sure you check out my YouTube channel. There is a full review independently of just this brand new bait right here, um, 24 hours after I got it from iCast. So um, make sure you guys check that out. But for now, let's go fishing with the slobber knocker and see how it does. All right, throw. so throwing this uh, slobber knocker out here, like my third cast, I just had a monster largemouth hit it. Dude, that was a good Jumped up right out of the water like a torpedo, like this high out of the water, just spit it out like 10 feet up in the air. Uh, so now, uh, now I know they're biting over here in the shallows. They're cruising around a sandy flat, and I'm working this uh, slobber knocker pretty fast. It's a 3 8 ounce uh, bruised bluegill color with the Okeechobee Craw Power Stinger trailer. And I'm working this thing pretty fast over the sandy flat and this weed line um, just to keep it off the bottom. But man, that gets your adrenaline going like crazy when you see a fish jump out like 18 inches out of the water and spit your lure like five feet up in the air. That was cool. That was really cool. Oh, it's had another strike. I'm telling you, I'm coming right over this weed line right here. So one thing I will tell you, the slobber knocker has a definitely a, a different vibration pattern um, than what I'm used to with the chatter baits um, and any other bladed jig I've thrown. Um, a lot of the bladed jigs will have like a really heavy vibration, like your whole rod just vibrates like, like a chatter. Oh, that's why it's called a chatter bait. Um, where the slobber knocker, because the blade is attached right to the head of the jig and the angle they put this blade on and everything, it gives it more of a tight vibration. It's more of a kind of like when you catch like a rock bass or like a really aggressive panfish and you have that really tight like death wobble um that's what it feels like when you're reeling this thing in uh where the jackhammer um or any of the any any of the chatter baits or other bladed jigs out there they're all pretty similar to each other where it's more of like a, a the chat the best way to describe it is the chatter it's like a dit, 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 where this one is like a brrrr, if that makes any sense uh this is definitely more of a vibration than a chatter um so i'm really liking the uh the movement of the slobber knocker and uh, the fish are liking it too. Uh, I caught a monster on this thing yesterday when I was first testing it out for the first time. Uh, make sure you guys watch that full review I did of the slobber knocker on my YouTube channel because I uh, hammered a monster largemouth on this thing yesterday. But the jackhammer has been tried and proven for so long that uh, I know it's effective too. So we're gonna throw that next. I'm just gonna see if I can get a, another good strike on this one. Again, I'm throwing that bruised bluegill color, so it's perfect natural color out here. Um, the jackhammer that I brought with me that I'm throwing is uh, green and red. It's watermelon red, uh, which is another great color out here. So I think they're both going to be effective. Uh, just a matter of uh, which kind of uh, profile the fish are going to like today. That tight vibration or the little bit heavier of a chatter. So let's see. All right, so the slobber knocker produces bass. We got this one down. Um, he was right on a drop off down deep. Um, but now let's switch baits. Let's throw that jackhammer and let's see if we get the same results with the jackhammer. Nice bass though. One big thing that I did notice, um, if you look at the head, so I did mention how the head is uh, on the slobber knocker, it's connected right to the jig head, the blade. So you can see how it's connected right there um, where the chatter bait is connected by an eyelet so there is a connection point right here so it gives the jig the ability to do this uh, where the slobber knocker doesn't do that um, because it is connected to the blade so there's two things pro and con that I will say about this so 
with this movement, it gives it that chatter. So you can hear it, the blade hits the head. You can see the head is all on the front of it right here. Um, because it does hit the head, but it gives it that chatter like this, like a little bit more of a wobble, like, like this. Where on the slobber knocker, where it's connected solid to the jig head, the whole thing is more of a twisting. It's more of a vibrate like this. Um, so instead of a side to side chatter, it's more of a twisting vibrate. Um, the other thing is too, is and I've had this happen where I've had blades break off on me on, on jackhammers because of that connection right there. Um, where the uh, slobber knocker, um, I haven't tested one to failure yet, but I also don't see that breaking off because of the way it's connected. But you can see the side to side movement is different. Um, so this is a vibration, like I was saying earlier, um, where the jackhammer um, is a chatter. So you can see that side to side movement when I hold the blade like this. Um, so that's where you get the chatter from. So they're very different. They're both effective in different in different things. I will say this too. I just use a slobber knocker through some heavy lily pads. And because it stays more in line and it's more of a vibration, that blade pushes things out of the way a little bit better. So I had no hang-ups in the lily pads. Um, I had no problems with even vegetation stopping the slobber knocker from vibrating. It works right through vegetation. Where the chatter bait being on a joint like that, um, when you get seaweed on it, it does stop it from chattering. So um, there is that too. So very different. They're both great baits. They're just very different baits. Um, I'm, I'm surprised with how different they really are. Uh, most bladed jigs are very similar to the jackhammer where the slobber knocker from Berkeley, I think is the first one that's a bladed jig that's so different. It's so unique. It has such a different profile to it and different uh, movement to it. So. I can't say I like one better than the other at this point, not yet at least, but I will say that uh, the pros and cons are leaning towards the slobber knocker being a little more dependable. Um, the jackhammer seems like you can move it slower and still get a solid chatter, where the slobber knocker, uh, when you move it slower, you lose the vibration a little bit quicker. Uh, so, but you can still move it slow. It's not that big of a difference. I'm just nitpicking here. I'm trying to find every small little detail I can to do a very accurate versus uh, video for you guys for the difference between these two baits. But, um, you know, at first glance, they seem a lot more similar than they actually are. Um, but when you, when you put them side by side like this and you actually see the difference between the two, um, it's a pretty big difference. I mean, the way that head connects is way bigger of a difference than you'd expect and the head shape too like i said the shape of that head is so different that big sweeping motion right there is so nice on the, the slobber knocker but being able to move this really really slow is nice too so i mean lots of differences but we're going to keep on testing and uh see what the difference is so for today's versus video i am doing at least 75 casts with each bait today. Uh, that was my plan from the start. I'm doing 75 casts of the slobber knocker and 75 casts with the jackhammer. Um, whether I got fish or not, it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, obviously I'm hoping I get fish, but I must keep on casting and retrieving. Um, I'm in 82 degree water temps right now. It's super hot out today. It's super humid today. Not the best fishing conditions right now for a bait like this. Um, I normally would be using something a little bit deeper and finesse fishing right now. Um, but right now I'm in a shallow canal, um, just getting my cast in. I just want to get as used to this bait as I can. I have many, many years of experience using the jackhammer and other chatter baits uh, where the slobber knocker, I've got two days experience on it. So like I said, 75 casts is my minimum for the day. Um, I think I've already far exceeded that with the slobber knocker here. So uh, after I fish this area right here, I'm going to switch it up to the chatter bait. And I'll start throwing the jackhammer. And uh, after I'm used to the way this one feels all day, it's going to be a pretty big adjustment. Because like I said multiple times in this video, the vibration versus the chatter is the biggest difference um, that I've noticed so far. Uh, after using the jackhammer for years and using a slobber knocker for two days straight right now, um, like I said, the biggest noticeable difference that I've had so far is the vibration versus the chatter. Um, but also, I will say, I, uh, I'm a huge fan of the way the slobber knocker moves in vegetation. Um, I really like how it's a little bit tighter pattern. Um, it's a lot harder for this thing to get hung up, for the blade to stop moving. It takes a lot more uh, gunk, a lot more buildup for this to stop working. And the curve of the, the blade in the front really helps deflect a lot of that too. So I do like that so far. Um, that's a huge pro in the pro category for the slobber knocker. But after about two more casts here, I'm gonna switch it up 
and go to the jackhammer and get my 75 casts in with that. And uh, see if we can find some fish with it. But like I said, fish or not, my goal today isn't catching fish. My goal is to get as many casts as I can so I can get as familiar with both these baits versus each other and let you guys know my opinion on the pros and cons um, and which one is winning in which category and which one is giving a little bit in the other category. So let's keep on going. 82 degree water temps out here in Michigan. Nuts. All right, so put that away. And let's swap out to the jackhammer now. So now uh, these are both the same, same weight, um, same line, same rod, um, so just different bait. So here's the jackhammer I'm gonna be throwing. And uh, let me start getting my uh, 75 to 300 casts in with the jackhammer. Um, throwing this jackhammer, the chatter, like, I don't, I don't know if you see that rod vibrating. Um, but the chatter on this thing is definitely uh, a lot more uh, erratic than the, than the slobber knocker is. So as far as noise underwater goes, um, or movement I should say, I can't say noise, but movement, um, the, the jackhammer has way heavier movement. Um, isn't always a positive or a negative thing, it's just a difference between the two. Um, where the slobber knocker feels like my rod is vibrating, where the chatterbait feels like my rod is shaking. So it's like going from driving a car to a truck, you know, it's not really a, a massive pro and con, um, but just a very noticeable difference, very noticeable difference of how it handles. Let me cast this thing into some weeds too because uh, that's where I noticed the slobber knocker was kind of shining for me um, just based on my experience with the chatterbaits. Um, it takes a very little strand of vegetation to stop the chatterbaits from chattering uh, where the slobber knocker I was reeling it in with a good amount of salad on it and it was still vibrating the whole time. throwing dramatically two different colors too like the slobber knocker I'm throwing is a bluegill it's dark green and blue um, the jackhammer I'm throwing is red and green so very big difference in colors uh, I think the red is better for where I'm fishing right now but in the open water where I was earlier um, the slobber knocker is a better color for out there uh, it's bluegill versus craw color pretty much so the bluegill color is gonna be better in the open water and the clear water out there where uh, back here where it's a little bit murkier in the shallower water where it's a lot more vegetation this craw color is gonna be a lot more effective. Uh, so as far as the colors go, obviously, if I was throwing a red slobber knocker versus the red jackhammer, it'd be a little more comparable as far as fish catches go or efficiency in fish catching. But again, I'm just trying to get as many casts as I can and just get the movements and uh, get those out of the way, the movements, and just see the difference. Now hitting structure, now that's a big one too. So hitting structure with, uh, the slobber knocker, the head is a lot bigger um, and it's got a bigger slope on the bottom. So when you hit structure, I feel like it deflects a lot faster. Like it bounces off structure a little bit better, especially if it's like a rock or a log, something that's a little bit more sizable. Um, it bounces off a little bit better. The jackhammer has a little bit more of like a, a smaller head, um, a little more angular head. So it might help with swimming, but as far as bouncing off structure, I think the slobber knocker has got to win in that category too the head design and uh, going through vegetation. But you can't deny the jackhammer's ability um, in open water. Um, I mean, it's just been proven for so long. It's such a solid bait. Like I said, and I'll say it a million times, I don't think these two baits should be compared as far as which one's better. I feel like they should be compared as far as which one's good for what situation versus which one is better um, in another situation. Uh, because that's way more accurate. These, these baits aren't similar enough to try to say which one's better overall than the other. Like, I don't think it's one of those baits that you could have uh, one or the other all the time. I think it's depending on each, each situation, each body of water, um, and how you're throwing it. There we go. 
There we go. Nice little large mouth. Oh, it's gonna jump again. Get some acrobatics. There we go. So like I said, this red color back here is a, uh, this red color back here is a great color for back here. It's a lot muckier back here. It's not clear water. They got destroyed on that fish. So I will say uh, the hook keeper on the jackhammer is uh, a little wire, a little wire hook keeper right there. Um, and I don't like it as much as the slobber knocker. The slobber knocker has a lead hook keeper inside of here um, and it doesn't tear up the trailer as much at all. Um, that's the one thing I will say too. Um, I have a really hard time with these uh, the jackhammer keepers. There's a, a wire keeper on the top and the bottom and it kind of shreds your trailers when fish grab the back of it like that one just did. So um, I do like the hook keepers better on the slobber knocker. So slobber knocker wins in the hook keeper category. Um, the chatter bait I think works in the noise category. Um, and I'm definitely going to say that uh, versatility um, is for both of them. They both break pretty even versatility. Um, but I'm going to give the slobber knocker the win in um, open water movement and using on the bottom like a jig because that head design really works well. I'm also going to give the slobber knocker a win in the vegetation category because ripping that thing through vegetation, uh, it took a lot of weeds to stop that blade from moving versus the jackhammer where it, it takes a string, like a little hair in the water to stop that from moving because the clasp. Um, and then again, um, I'm gonna have to give durability a, a kind of open for now because I've only been using a slobber knocker for two days. Yeah, I've cashed it hundreds of times with it. I've caught three or four fish on it already pretty solid, but that's not long enough to really give me an accurate durability test where the jackhammer I've been using for many, many years. Um, I've had blades pop off on them and break off on them. I've had uh, the paint comes off of the jackhammers pretty quickly because of the way that that blade hits the jig head. Um, but like I said, I haven't used the slobber knocker long enough. It hasn't been out long enough. Um, to really get a good reading on durability. But uh, they're both great baits. Uh, they both produce a lot of results. You can't deny that. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, I think the slobber knocker gets a little bit of an advantage because it is a newer design and they just took an amazing bait, made some improvements on it, added some of their own um, stuff to it. And uh, the hook keeper, the moving through vegetation, and I like the tight vibration um, only because I think it mimics a, a lifelike fish a little bit more than the wider, louder um, chatter of a chatterbait. But either way, let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you think the chatterbait's a better one or the slobber knocker's a better one, um, get out and order this one and try it out and uh, make up your mind and see which one works the best for you. Because at the end of the day, they're both gonna catch fish. It's just a matter of which one works the best for you and the way you fish it. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope this review helped a little bit and helped show you guys some of the differences. And uh, we'll see you soon. The Basquatch Hunter. Subscribe on YouTube.